In the idiotic liability and money-grubbing climate of today that prevents the majority of passenger excursions from operating, it is so refreshing to see a company care and allow trips to operate over their rails. For three weekends, the Cincinnati Scenic Railway's Ohio Rail Experience would operate excursions throughout Ohio and into parts of eastern Indiana and southern Michigan. This year's spring schedule would include several rare mileage trips, including excursions over the ex-New York Central Big Four Railroad headed west out of Cincinnati and trips on the north end of the former mainline of the Detroit, Toledo, and Ironton Railroad and onto the ex-New York Central Old Road in southern Michigan. Not being overly familiar with the area, I was not aware that in order to ferry the train to and from Leipzig, Ohio for the last weekends of trips for the spring, the train would have to travel over the main line of CSX between Lima and Leipzig, Ohio. The CSX main line the train would be traveling over is the CSX Toledo Sub, built by the Baltimore and Ohio Railway as a main line from Toledo to Cincinnati. Today, the Toledo Sub still sees plenty of CSX freight action and is a favorite among rail fans as it is one of the few lines remaining with CTC era B&O color position light signals still in use. After deboarding from the 10-hour round-trip excursion aboard the train, I went and set up just north of where the DT&I, today the Indiana and Ohio Railway, joins into the CSX for the trip south to Lima. Shortly after setting up, CNO 5704, the oldest continuously operating GP7 in the country, began pulling the train south towards the signal on CSX. On February 14, 1966, with traffic beginning to slow, the DT&I abandoned its parallel main line along the B&O from Lima to Lipsick after working out a trackage rights agreement. At Ottawa, the Indiana, Ohio still owns a loop of the former DT&I main line around town, serving customers located along it. Despite having trackage rights straight down the B&O through town, the CSX dispatcher opted to send train Z86530 around the loop, which in turn made for a good show of toddling up from the 74-year-old 5704 as the train passed by the set of CPLs at CP South Ottawa getting up to track speed. Racing from Ottawa to Columbus Grove with hardly any time to set up Z865 would come by doing track speed of 35 through the small town.
between Columbus Grove and Cairo, Z-865 was able to open the throttle as the train flew through the Ohio countryside. At Cairo, Z865 would pound through the switches and onto the two-track before stopping at South Cairo to meet a northbound CSX mixed freight. At Lutz Road, just north of DTNI Junction, we found the northbound freight stopped after finishing switching up CSX's yard in Lima, departing north shortly after. Once the freight had cleared, the CSX dispatcher lit up train Z865 and it continued south on to the DTNI.
back on the DTNI, the 5704 and train would pass over Blue Lick Road and pass the holdout signal to DTNI Junction. Arriving at the INO's Lima Yard, the train would hold to drop the pilot required to operate over CSX. As the light began to fade, surrounded by good friends, we waited for our final shot of the day as the train passed under the DT&I searchlight cantilever, protecting the diamond over the former nickel plate road. you enjoyed this look at vintage power on the mainline and i would like to extend my thanks to nick dombey cg tower garrett monan gabe thomas matt conan harold rob scott jarrett for their help i extend my greatest thanks to the team from ore and crc csx transportation and the genesee and wyoming railroad company for making these scenes possible thank you for seeing the value in these events from Lima, Ohio on the DTNI mainline, this is Gabe Passmore, signing out.